substitution. In this video we talk about substitution, which is a method to find the antiderivative for maybe a little bit more complicated functions. We know how to do the antiderivative for elementary functions, we did this before, but now let's look at this example. So find the antiderivative integral x sine x squared dx. Now we cannot just look at it and know the antiderivative. We need to do a little bit of thinking. And so maybe we start with a sine. We know the antiderivative of sine is minus cos. And then we certainly keep the argument of x squared. Okay? Now let's look at minus cos x squared. If I differentiate this, then what do I get? If I do d by dx, minus cos differentiated is sine of x squared, but then I have an inner derivative 2x from the x squared term. But we are close, you see that? So it's only the factor 2 which is in the way. Otherwise we have a form x sine x squared. So what if we divide everything by 2? This and this. Well, then we are there. And we have an antiderivative. But is there a smarter way to do this? Indeed, there is. And the smarter way is called the substitution rule, or simply substitution. And it goes like follows. I start with the original integral again, integral x sine x squared dx, and then I do what is called a substitution. I substitute a new variable for this x squared term. In the end, what I like to do is I like to undo the chain rule. And so this factor x came kind of from the chain rule, okay? So I use an inner function, and here the inner function would be x squared. So I substitute u for x squared, but then I also need to differentiate this. I need to find du by dx. If I do this, this is 2x. And then I borrow from the theory of differentials and write this as du equals 2x dx. Now for the calculus course, you are not required to know what a differential is but you are required to do this transformation. And then I go back to my integral here. And so I write this, this is integral sine of u, x dx. Okay, so now I just replace this x squared by u, but you see the term x dx appears here in my substitution as well. And this is du divided by two. So what we get, this is integral sine of u, one half du. Okay, so I replaced x dx by one half du. But now this is a perfectly fine integral in u. So maybe I can put out the factor one half up front, and then I have integral sine u du. So now this tells me to find the antiderivative of sine. Well, this is super easy. So then, ca then I can do this as minus a half cosine of u plus a constant. But now I have to substitute back. So u is really x squared. And I do minus one half cosine of x squared plus the constant. And you know what? This is indeed the same as we had here. In the end, the substitution undoes the chain rule. So let's do that in general. So what was the chain rule again? So d by dx, f of g of x, a composite function, is f prime at g times g prime. So what we like to see is an integral where this right-hand side of the chain rule appears. So we want an integral of the form f prime of g times g prime. And now the question is, the tricky part is, to identify g and f. What is g and f in any given example? Let me do this substitution rule right here for the general case. So then we substitute. u is equal to g of x. Okay, and then we do this differentiation thingy again. So du by dx is uh, g prime of x so that we can write du is g prime of x dx. And now if you look here and here, then you see this is exactly why we do this. The term g prime of x dx appears right here in the integral. Okay, so then we can write this integral to be integral f prime, g is u, and then g prime of x dx is du. So we get a simple integral of f prime. But now the antiderivative of f prime is f. So then this is f of u plus the constant, and then subbing in what u is, u is g of x plus c. This is kind of the reverse of the chain rule, 
we undo the chain rule. So here is the rule now. Integral f prime of g, g prime dx is integral f of u du, where u is g of x. Let's do a few more examples here. Find the antiderivative integral sine x divided by cosine x to the fifth. The part where you need to think is the uh, identification of u. And actually there is no golden rule. Sometimes you try something, it works. Sometimes you try something and it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you have to go back and try it again. So here in this video, I know already what works, so I choose actually what works. So here I said u is equal to cosine of x. And you get a hint of this because you have a term sine x dx sitting right here. And this sine could arise as a derivative of cosine, right? This could be the g prime term. So let's try to make that happen. Then du by dx is minus sine. So du is minus sine of x dx. And uh, then we can go into this integral. So then we find sine x dx is minus du. So, and the cosine to the fifth is u to the fifth. So now this is a nice integral. I write it down again. It's u to the minus 5 du. Hey, and now we can integrate. So this is u to the minus 4. Um, a minus sign we keep, and then we get a minus 1 quarter on the front plus a constant. So simplify. This is a quarter u to the minus 4 plus a constant. And then one more step. We need to substitute what u is. 1 quarter cosine to the minus 4 plus a constant. So this is an example which you would not have been able to do without substitution. And the key is to find the right substitute u. So let's do that for the other example here. Integral of 1 plus x squared all to the 3 halves times x to the 3. Oh my goodness, this looks really rather complicated. So what is the right substitution here? Well, I would try u is 1 plus x squared, this inner bit. And then we have du by dx is 2x, and so du is 2x dx. What I also find, which I might need later, is that x squared here can be written as u minus 1. So this is what I get from the substitution. Now let's look at the integration where these terms arise. Actually, I have to use a little trick. I write this as 1 plus x squared to the 3 half times x squared times x dx. And you might already suspect why I do this, because the x dx is right here. Right here we have 2x dx. Fine. But the x squared, ah, this can be substituted by u minus 1 from here. Oh, so it might work. Let's go for it. This is integral u to the 3 half. Okay. Now the x squared is u minus 1. And the x dx is 1 half du. Okay, so don't forget the 1 half, which comes right from here. Now we are in a position to integrate this out. So we first multiply the bracket. So u to the 3 half times u is u to the 5 half minus u to the 3 half uh, du, and then the 1 half, the 1 half, or maybe I put it here. To not forget the factor 1 half, I move it up front. Then I integrate u, u to the 5 half, this is 7 halves, so we got 2 seventh u to the 7 half minus, and 3 halves integrates to 5 halves, so we get 2 fifth u to the 5 half plus a big constant. Almost done. Again, we need to replace u by 1 plus x squared, our substitution. So then we get a long formula, but anyway, so it's 1 half, 2 seventh, 1 plus x squared to the 7 halves, minus 2 fifth, 1 plus x squared to the 5 half plus a constant. Wow. So this is a pretty crazy example. But you see the use of the substitution rule. And the key is to identify what to substitute, as I said before. Sometimes it's not so clear. And you might have to do two or three tries until it really works. So don't give up.
Let me summarize. The substitution rule undoes the chain rule in the sense that we integrate a function of the form f prime of g of x times g prime and we use the substitution u is g of x to integrate f of u du, which in many cases is easy to do. Oh, hi, Tolo. What are you up to? You look great. You're substituting the quarterback. Oh, this is awesome. So have a good game. <laughs>